terms of global equity markets and, and global growth, we're essentially in the third year of an economic recovery and we're in the third year of an equ equity market recovery. Uh, from our point of view, we see economic growth in the next 12 months as being positive. While there will be some negative influences, the US is obviously still struggling a little bit. Ireland, Portugal and some of the European countries will go by the wayside. There are a number of positive influences that will offset that, in particular the reacceleration of growth in China uh, and the emerging markets in the whole and the whole demographic shift that's going on there. So from our point of view, positive economic growth in 2011 equals positive earnings performance in 2011. Equity markets are cheap. Uh, versus history and particularly versus other asset classes. So that probably lends itself to another year of positive equity returns over the next 12 months. And a good example would obviously be the year we've just had. Um, even though we had the European crisis mid-year, the US going into a double dip recession, equity markets on the whole have managed to climb the wall of worry and put on 10% roughly performances globally. We'd see that again next year and probably slightly better as the market gets more used to the fact that the economy, economic recovery can be sustainable. <music> Quantitative easing, uh, for those who don't necessarily understand, is essentially a policy that's been adopted by the US Central Bank, the UK Central Bank, and to a certain extent the European Central Bank. And what they're doing in those cases, interest rates have got down to zero, and to further stimulate their economies, they've effectively started printing money. Now, this is a very un unconventional economic policy. There's been a lot of criticism against it, and on, on the one hand, you could call it unconventional. On the other hand, you could call it blatantly inflationary. From our point of view, the one thing that this policy does do is it does tell you the one place you don't want to be is in cash. If they are printing more money, the one place you don't want to be is in cash. You want to be out of cash because this policy will eventually be inflationary. From our point of view, we need to position investors' portfolios to, to protect against this. And what you're seeing already from investors is they're moving to other stores of wealth, be it gold, be it commodities, or focusing on other areas of growth, be it emerging market equities. And from our point of view, we as custodians of people's wealth need to position against that and find, find alternative investments apart from cash. I believe the biggest misconception about investing in international equities is the performance of the index as it is. Um, everybody knows that the index has done virtually nothing over the last 10 years and investing in international equities has been, has been a rewardless investment. Um, from our point of view, the index to a certain extent is, is pretty much irrelevant. Um, there's over 7,000 companies in the world listed with a market cap of over $1 billion, and if I take that below a billion, it goes over 20,000. From our point of view, our job is to find the best companies within the index that will provide you returns. And regardless of what's happening in the economic cycle, whether we're in a boom or a bust, there are always companies that are doing well. A good example over the last four years would be Apple, whereas any person on the street could tell you that Apple iPhones, Apple computers, Apple iPods have done very well over the last five years. The company has effectively tripled over the last three years. It's been a big investment in our fund. There are other stocks that will always do well regardless of the economic environment and it's our job to find them. If you look at the returns of our fund, we've managed to achieve 13% compound returns over the last five years while the index has effectively done zero. And that's predominantly come from stock picking. From our point of view, that's what we've done in the past and that's what we'd hope to be able to do in the future. As I said previously, we are in difficult, unconventional economic times, unconventional policies. We have positioned the fund to focus on the growing areas of the world and we have positioned the fund to protect ourselves against quantitative easing. So from that point of view, we are really focused on growth. Growth is where you get earnings growth and earnings growth usually equals higher share prices. So from that point of view, the fund is very focused on emerging markets, particularly Asia at the moment. Um, the emerging markets trade actually on a discount valuation to the Western world, uh, a small discount to the US. Uh, and a slight premium to Europe. So from that point of view, it seems a fairly obvious place to invest if that's where all the growth is. Uh, on top of that, we then also not only invest in the emerging markets, but invest in the Western companies that can deliver to the emerging markets. So that sees us in a lot of resource companies, sees us in a lot of capital good companies that can deliver products to the emerging markets, and then finally sees us in the consumer products. Uh, particularly the luxury good makers that are delivering into these emerging markets. Roughly that's where the fund is positioned at the moment and that's where we feel we're going to get the best returns over the next 12 months. Current exposure level has been running roughly 80 to 100 percent net equity exposure uh, and it's been running at that level for quite some time. Um, we have been very positive the economic recovery. Yes there will be speed humps along the way, yes there will be corrections, but from our point of view the market will climb the wall of worry as it has this year and will continue to do next year. And from that point of view, we want to stay exposed because we do see an awful lot of investment opportunities out there. And as I said before, if you look outside of the market and stop focusing on the indices, you can actually find 
a remarkably large amount of investment opportunities at the moment that have been generally ignored by, by the investing public. As I said previously, with regards to quantitative easing, uh, inevitably, if you print more money in the US, that will depreciate the value of the US dollar. Conversely, that will appreciate the value of the Australian dollar. From our point of view as guardians of, of, of people's wealth, we need to protect against that. So we're currently running the fund 100% hedged Australian dollars, which means as the Australian dollar appreciates, we do not lose any money on the returns of our international investments from an appreciating currency. Obviously, quantitative easing is one factor. As I said, there's strong growth in Asia, which is continuing the pressure on the Australian dollars. And interest rates here are much higher, obviously pushing up near 6% versus, versus zero and going lower elsewhere in the world. So all of that's going to mean a higher Aussie dollar. Uh, that's something we don't want to lose money on, so we're going to be pro pragmatic and protect against that by hedging all of our Australian dollar, all of our international investments back to Australian dollars. It's a difficult time for investors at the moment because there's a lot of confusing and mixed signals out there. Our view would just be if you peel away all the noise and you peel away uh, all, all of the commentary, the, the world is in the second or third year of an economic recovery. Uh, growth next year will be positive. That means earnings for global equities next year will be positive. Uh, valuations are low, particularly compared to other asset classes, and that generally lends itself to positive equity returns. Uh, from our point of view, we see a lot of good investment opportunities, as I said, in terms of corporates. And from our point of view, as custodian, guardians of our clients' wealth, we need to basically find those opportunities and invest in them. We're excited about the next 12 months. Uh, it's not going to be 30-40% returns, it's not going to be negative 30-40% returns, but it is going to be positive returns and we feel confident that we can continue to find them.